The man, the myth, the legend is stepping away from acting. Bruce Willis's family shared publicly the other day that he suffers from aphasia, which is a disease that robs you of your ability to communicate. It can affect your ability to speak, write, or even understand what people are saying back to you. This is brutal news for me. I'm a huge fan of Bruce Willis. I have been, like, you know, growing up, obviously. It's, uh, I'm a 90s kid. There were a lot of comments in the last couple years saying, Adam, you need to do a video talking about all the terrible Bruce Willis movies he's been making lately, because it's true. He's been shitting out so many bad movies the last few years, it was almost unbelievable. I'm not defending his like last 20 years where I do think he kind of checked out when it comes to some of the roles he's taken or, and just his performance in general. But the movies he was coming out with in the last couple years were obviously for paychecks. I mean, he was making a million dollars a day just to show up on set. And it was clear these were bad films from the onset. He was trying to build up a nest egg even more so for his family, or I don't, I don't know what's going on over there financially or personally what this money's for. It's also very possible these were just very easy roles for him to land and do, and the best way to fight an illness is to keep your mind sharp. Keep doing what you're doing. Go to work. Interact with people. Keep your brain moving. So in that aspect, yeah, of course. Keep putting these crappy movies out because it's saving your life. And had I made a video about Bruce Willis and these bad movies, I, I wouldn't feel bad regardless. And I don't throw shade at any other channels that did so. I mean, it's fun to make fun of bad movies, you know? And, and Bruce Willis, he's a legend. He's an icon. He's been in some of my favorite movies of all time. So even if we're taking the guy down a couple pegs, he's so far up. He, you know, he made it. The man starred in Die Hard. He's John McClane. He could have done anything else after that and it wouldn't matter. I, I, I give him a pass because Die Hard is like one of my favorite movies ever. That's like Gerard Butler with 300. He gave us, he gave us gold. He did nothing but shit after that pretty much, but he gave us that one movie and we'll be forever thankful for that performance. But unlike Gerard Butler, who maybe has one or two other good movies, Bruce Willis has a catalog of fantastic films. Not only does he have Die Hard 1, 2, 3, 4, there's only four Die Hard movies. It's a fantastic quadology. What do we call four movies? But lest we forget The Fifth Element, a movie that's so weird and fun and quirky and unlike anything else that's really ever come out, it's a phenomenal movie. It was shit on by critics, but never by me. I saw that film three times in theaters and loved it. I'll have a review on that, by the way, in a few days because uh, I, I think it needs to be talked about more. Another off-the-wall bonkers film is 12 Monkeys with Bruce Willis and Brad Pitt. Then you have the big Michael Bay blockbuster Armageddon. It's your typical tale of some salt-of-the-earth blue-collared workers who take a spaceship up to an asteroid that they have to drill to the center of to break it in half so it doesn't destroy the Earth. Don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep because I miss you, babe. And I don't want to miss a thing. We can't forget Unbreakable, where he plays an unconventional superhero. It's too bad they never did a follow-up film for that. It's too bad they never made a movie called Glass. That's another film that doesn't exist. Unbreakable's an M. Night Shyamalan movie. I feel like he maybe did one other M. Night movie. Oh yeah, The Sixth Sense, the movie that has one of the craziest twists of all time. That's a Bruce Willis vehicle. And Haley Joe Osmond, we can't discredit Haley. I didn't see movies often with my mom in theaters. I can probably count on one hand the movies we've been to together. But The Sixth Sense, I saw with her and my dad. Oh, it was such a sweet experience. The, the absolute jaw-dropping reveal at the end that no one saw coming, mind you. I don't give a shit what people say years later. No one saw it coming. One of my favorite badass Bruce Willis performances is in Sin City. That black and white, gritty comic book style film where he's just, he's got the bum ticker, he's got that freaking gun, he's crawling on the ground, he's trying to save his girl. It's such a sweet movie. Then you got 16 Blocks where he's a, I believe he's a, a cop down on his luck. He's just trying to get through the day unscathed. He did more comedic roles too, like in The Kid or Bandits or The Whole Nine Yards. And he was also in that little indie Quentin Tarantino film, Pulp Fiction. Did I bring up The Last Boy Scout with Damon Wayans and Halle Berry? If not, The Last Boy Scout kicks ass and you should watch it immediately. Just a forewarning. 
he has an incredibly annoying daughter in that movie. Just block her out. You just need to block her out and get past it because The Last Boy Scout kicks ass. He's been in over a hundred movies, I believe. Death Becomes There's another great one. Mercury Rising's a fantastic thriller. I never saw Hudson Hawk. I know some people think it's an underrated classic. I haven't seen it. I wouldn't mind watching it now. This really bums me out. And I know Bruce Willis hasn't been putting in a lot of the work and effort in the last 20 years. Uh, Stallone had to beg him basically to come back for the Expendables for that tiny day or so shoot. But man, the memories I had going to his films with my dad, RIP, uh, they, they, were, they were very special. I'll never forget them. Just on a Sunday afternoon, watching the Die Hard trilogy at the time. I, man, it's, it's so good. At the end of the day, this sucks, man. It's a bummer to watch some of these 90s action stars start to age out. The, the Stallones, the Schwarzeneggers, the Willises, the Banderas, these guys that we used to watch all their films and, and have a good time. Of course, some of them I mentioned are still going, they're still doing their thing, but it's not the same. And I still go to the movies and I keep waiting for the next Willis or the next Schwarzenegger to come out. Yes, we have our Dwayne Johnsons. Tom Cruise is still kicking ass in his 60s, but we don't have that everyman actor anymore that I can associate with my own dad and say, yes, I could see my old man being like Bruce Willis, taking out guys, crawling through vents. Of course, it's all fairy tale nonsense, but, but somehow or another, Bruce Willis brought that to his characters, that relatability, or at least that semi-plausibility when it's such an implausible situation. So it's sad news to report on. I know that there's dirt on Bruce Willis. I've heard he's not the easiest to work with. I'm not here to talk about the, the he said, she said stuff, okay? He, he was, at the end of the day, an actor. And from that aspect, I'm gonna miss him. I'd love to hear from you though. Let me know in the comments, what's your favorite Bruce Willis movie or an underrated movie I should maybe check out? I've seen a lot of them. I've seen most of them. I, Hudson Hawk, I think, is the, the biggest blemish that, that you could probably find. But still, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What's your favorite Bruce Willis movie? Like the video if, uh, you know, I mean, I, this wasn't a fun video by any means. But if, uh, you know, you just enjoy my content, I guess. Subscribe because I put out a ton of movie news, reactions, things of that nature. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Welcome to the party, pal. You made it to this little end card segment where some things propagate over here. Usually it's my face for a subscription and, and some related videos. But I'd also like to encourage you to check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies or become a join member right here on YouTube hitting that join button. It gives you access to even more videos that are hidden from these common peasants only you get access to. And you're also showing your support by becoming a member for just $1 or $5 or 10 bucks a month and saying, hey Adam, I like what you're doing. I get it's not your full-time job, you're a one-man operation, but I appreciate it. Stay the course.